Hi, in this video we're looking at the combined gas law. Uh, it's maybe one of my favorites because it takes lots of different understandings about gases and as the name suggests, combines them into one major understanding. So we have these four gas laws, Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law, and Avogadro's law. And a common question that I get from students is, hey, do I really have to remember all four of these separate gas laws? My short answer is no. You don't, and it's because we have the combined gas law, which takes all four of these understandings, combines them together. And so here's what it is. It's P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. It's the combined gas law. Now, very often in gas chemistry, we have a sealed sample of some gas. And when that happens, the amount of moles, in other words, N1 and N2, does not change. And so very, very often, you'll actually just see the combined gas law as P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. The other thing to mention is that the ones and the twos don't play a role at all in the math. You can think of the left side of this equation as the before situation, and then the right side is just simply the after situation. Now usually what we're given is information about all these variables except for just one of them. And we're meant to figure out what has happened to that either pressure, volume, temperature, or amount of moles. So I want to show you an example problem where we're using this. It says if you had a 30 milliliter container, pause, right there, stop. There's going to be a ton of information in these problems. So I suggest to you that you just make a list of P1, V1, N1, and T1. And then you know you're going to have a P2, a V2, an N2, and a T2. So you want to be able to kind of keep track of all of this information. And that's why I see a lot of students have uh, a lot of success writing down kind of a laundry list of all the information that the problem is giving you. So that way when you encounter a number like this, you don't necessarily have to keep it in your brain. You can assign it as one of these variables and then keep reading within the question. So let's start again. It says, if you had a 30 milliliter container of gas, milliliters is a volume. So let's put that as V1, 30 milliliters. Now I would recommend including the unit with this because you wanna make sure that your units for pressure and volume and moles and temperature, that they all match. And also while I'm thinking about it, keep in mind temperature has gotta be Kelvins, can't be Celsius. So let's keep reading. It says uh, it's at 3.0 atmospheres of pressure. So I want to put that in as P1, 3.0 atmospheres, and 293 Kelvin, 293 Kelvin. Um, and now it says this is the point right here in the problem where it changes to tell you about, okay, what's the new situation? By the way, it hasn't given us any information about N1. That doesn't mean that that's the... Uh, variable that we're solving for. It just means that you can assume this is a sealed sample of gas. Uh, if it's not ever giving you information about, in this case, N1 and N2, just remove it from the equation. Let's say it didn't give us any information about volume. Well, if I cross off V1 and V2, do it in your head. Don't you just have Gay-Lussac's law here? Or maybe temperature stays the same. If I just cross that off, don't I just have Boyle's law there? And so that's how the combined gas law can be so powerful. In this case, I don't need uh, N1 and N2 because the problem doesn't mention at all that I'm losing or gaining gas uh, particles. So let's keep reading. It says, and you reduce the volume to 15.0 milliliters. So that must be the new volume, 15.0 milliliters. And you heated the temperature to 333 kelvins. What would be the pressure inside? So this right here is what we're solving for. And when we solve for it, it's the unit's going to match atmospheres there. Milliliters matches, so that's good. I don't have to convert anything. And Kelvin's matches, so that's good as well. So I just want to use this formula here, using these numbers to represent those variables, plug in and solve for P2. So I'll do that right underneath over here. P1 is 3.0 atmospheres. V1 is 30.0 milliliters. And then T1 is 293 Kelvin. So that's the left side. The right side, I don't know P2. Uh, some people like to leave that as X um, or as P2. Um, that's up to you. 
15.0 milliliters is the new volume. And then on the bottom, I have 333 kelvins as the new temperature. In this situation, I want to cross multiply. So here's what I'm gonna type into my calculator. Three times 30 times 333, that's these three numbers here. So the diagonal, kind of crossed off that three, sorry. And then I wanna divide by this here, and then divide by that there. And that should give me P2. So let me do that in my calculator. I'll tell you what I'm typing in. I'm typing in three times 30 times 333 divided by 293 divided by 15, and my calculator gives me 6.81911. We only want two significant figures because of that 3.0. So 6.8 atmospheres will do it. So that's it, that's the new pressure. It's the power of the combined gas law. It's combining Boyle's, Charles, Gay Lussac's, and Avogadro's laws and their understandings into one thing. It's super helpful, thank you.